Can I have more fun? Yeah. And so now in a world where women are hypergamous, they're dating mm-hmm. over and up, and they can see the level of success via Instagram, whatever, yeah. across a wide but swath you, of humanity. Have you heard what I talk about when I say what hypergamy actually means for women? Tell me more. I, I, would, I know that the traditional sense hypergamy is just, you know, women want someone older, richer, all of these things. I say actually none of that matters. Women, actually their definition of hypergamy is the man that is she can't manipulate. That's the only man she'll find hypergamous. A 19-year-old who's dating a CEO who's 40 years old far more successful than her, taller than her, uh, more in, more grades, more qualifications, everything is above her. You would say that she's hypergamous. I can guarantee you if she can manipulate every money, every piece, and get rent from him, get a car, she will still throw him in the dust and find somebody that she actually respects. That's not hypergamy in a woman's eyes. Hypergamy in a woman's eyes is we can't fool you. Simple. She would rather be with a man that is less successful, less intelligent. She'd, not that she'd rather be, but she'd be more submissive to a man who's less successful, less intelligent, might even be a bit shorter, but he doesn't fall for nonsense. He knows when she, he's, she's trying to manipulate him. She, she can't trick him. She can't manipulate him. So I believe hypergamy is defined purely by the art of manipulation, not actually by the arbitrary things. Of course, we want someone richer and taller, but the uh, baseline of that uh, only matters if you're more intelligent than us and we don't define intelligence by financial success we define intelligence by can I manipulate you yes or no if the answer is no you are not an idiot you are not going to pay my rent while your own daughter's rent you don't even consider or you are not going to buy me a car because I slept with you a couple of times you're not stupid but if we find that oh my god I can tell him that I need his card and he gives it to me straight away or I can tell him that you know I lost my job so I need rent he gives it to me straight away without me even knowing him that well just because immediately she loses respect respect and therefore the hypergamy disappears. So I think you're on to a really important addition to Mm -hmm. hypergamy, but I can hear the men in the comments screaming right now, like I can't be manipulated. So, yeah, uh, but I still can't get a date. Yeah. Uh, I think the key to add to that is that, uh, it has to be someone that the woman would want to manipulate. Yeah. And so if she's not drawn to you, attracted to you, finds nothing interesting about you, it doesn't matter that if she tried to manipulate you, tell her to fuck off, you're not mm-hmm. interested, whatever, um, there, there is a dynamic there. So mm-hmm. first there has to be mutual desire, yeah. and then there has to be a very yeah. mature uh, thing in it. It's funny, so... But I don't think men look for mutual desire anymore. I think men with high self-esteem do. I think men with super high self-esteem, I think the baseline is men with super high self-esteem, reciprocity is more important than beauty. As long as she she wants him as much as he wants her. And this is like, men with high self-esteem only know what women look like who like them. So they know women to want to take their clothes off. They want. They know women that are calling their phone 24-7. They know women who are initiating sex. That's what men with high self-esteem, that's the type of women they're around. Men with low self-esteem, which is getting more and more, don't care if she wants him just as long as he gets to touch her. So that's where you'll find these men that go to escorts. You'll find these men that go to webcams, these men that go, you know, travel, you know, um, passport boys. They don't care if she wants him or not. Just does she let me have sex with her? Mm. They're not looking for mutual desire as much, particularly as they get older. You think they're not looking for mutual desire or they have given up on finding I don't think they know what it even looks like because they're so replaced mutual desire with attraction from their perspective. I had a a video that was got a lot of hate where I said that um, the use of prostitutes is um, legal rape. Mm. And I believe that men who look for mutual desire they realize that consent is not simply somebody saying yes, it's somebody who wants you as much as you want them. That's what true consent looks like in their eyes. Whereas men who use prostitutes, consent simply means yes, regardless of whether that's manipulated consent or whether that's you know groomed or whatever it is, as long as she said yes. So even if you had to get that yes through an envelope on the table, they'll take that yes. They just want permission. But men with high self-esteem, they don't want permission. They want desire. Desire is their true form of consent when a woman desires them. So I think, yes, I do believe women are delusional with what they want. But there's nothing more delusional than that man that as he gets older and older and older, still wants that 19, 20-year-old, but wants her to actually want him. She doesn't. She's not going to want you. Is Trump raping Melania? Uh, consensual rape. And there is a thing. It's where the consent is bought 
on and it, as a result it becomes consensual rape. So you don't think it's possible yeah. that she thinks, ooh, like he's so powerful and so good at what he does. Powerful and, and status, all of these things only matter when the underlying attraction is them. Let's and, say yeah. that my wife is in a car accident mm -hmm. and she gets burned. Is she raping me if I sleep with her? Uh, no, because the underlying attraction is them. Even though physically that's going to be tough. That's, physically that's now play. it's going to be tough, but your premise for being together was is not destroyed because it wasn't that wasn't the premise of you guys being together. That wasn't the contract. But if the premise of Melania and Trump is that this guy's smart, he's uh, an I, amazing I, I think politician, businessman, whatever. Do you think she would be with him if he was broke tomorrow? Like lost no, everything? of course not. Right, so then the premise is, the, cons the, the contract says you have to maintain the conditions of which when we first met. Yeah. Whereas when it's love and connection and commitment, we understand the conditions can change, but we're committed to you. For them, they're committed to what their side of the deal was. Let me um, change my answer slightly. Yeah. In that would she stay with him if he lost everything and was trying to rebuild? Um, I don't know. Right. I, I literally went, I'm surprised I remember her name. <laughs> so that is like how yeah. not attached to that world yeah. I am. But I remember Lisa being very impressed when Melania was asked a question about, you know, why are you with Trump? He's just with you for your beauty and you're just with him for his money. Or just somebody said, yeah. you're just with him for his money. And she's like, hold on, but he's just with me for my beauty. Like, why is there such a double standard? Yeah. Now, my thing is I really do think that there's probably more credit to give to, because what I always tell people is don't worry about getting the money, yeah. become the kind of person that can earn that money. Yeah. So it's like most NBA players will never earn a championship ring, yeah. but they should still be just beyond proud of themselves yeah. for being so good at something that they were able to make it into the NBA. So yeah, they're still the 1% athlete wise. Exactly. Yeah. Become capable of a championship mm -hmm. performance, even if you never win a championship. Mm -hmm.